Today I'm going to be going over the process for making a stylized shader. Basically the final result is going to be this, but I want to go over the inspiration I had for this. First was a tutorial just about how to make stylized grass without any shading, and then someone else made a tutorial on how to do it with shading. So we can see here, just in here, what I have now is this color connected out here. And so I'm going to go through this tutorial first, give a brief overview, and then go step by step. So if you want to go step by step, I'll have a timestamp there. But if you want to see the process beforehand, you can see here, this is just doing the stylized, if that's the effect you want. You get this mapping texture coordinate, goes into a musgrave texture, which you can change with brightness and contrast. Then it goes into a color ramp, although I find this kind of redundant just because it does the same effect as the brightness and contrast and you can't put this to an output if you want to do it in a material, which I'll get to later, but it goes into there for the tutorial and then it'll go into this mix color and these two colors are what mixes to give you the tones of the grass. This stuff is for getting the shadow, so if you just want the stylized, it just goes right to an output. You can cut out this color ramp if you want to and you can also change what texture this is, but if you want shadowing, we'll plug this in here real quick just to show what it looks like. This hue and saturation value is going to dictate what the shadow looks like. You can see we can change it right here. I find this a bit difficult to work with, so I have a mix node instead in mind, but again, I'm just showing what the tutorial showed. We get a normal map from the plane itself that sits below all the grass. We do this so that the grass itself doesn't have the shadows, but if that's an effect you want, what you can do is either not use this or go down to the material tabs and go to shadow mode and turn that to opaque. Basically, you're going to get the shadows in all the grass, but we don't want that effect for this, so we're going to turn it back to none. This goes into a diffuse to get the lighting data and then to a shader to RGB, so we can put that into a color ramp, and this is what gives us the tune effect. I'll be going into more detail about how all this works, but this is basically the setup for the tutorial. After that, I decided to make my own because I found a problem with this one is that it doesn't take into account color lighting data. So for example, you can see this light here affects what the color is. Over here, it just creates the same color light because since this diffuse goes into a color ramp, it's turning it into black and white, so it doesn't take the color data. These tutorials were great for inspiring me on how to get my own shader going, so if you want these effects, I definitely recommend checking them out, but I'm going to be going on to mine now. First of all, I tugged this into a group, that way you can change it outside. You can see here you can change the noise, musgrave brightness, and I'll be getting into what all this does, but basically I put everything out so you can change it here. From there we'll go inside. So I've organized this a bit, I've got the generated texture here, I added a noise texture to add some variance within it. That's totally optional, you don't have to have that. Then going into the tone, as I said here, I changed it into a mix for the shadow. You can see the shadow here, and these colors, it's the same thing, it just comes from outside. You can see if we disconnect these, it's the same there. Going into the shadow, we have two different mixes. This one takes in what the shadow color is, and then it mixes the shadow with the color itself. This is the same process pretty much here. It's still mixing the shadow with the base color, and that's how we get the shadow effect here taking the lighting data. But the difference is with the lighting data, I separate the hue and saturation and value. This way we can get the hue and saturation of the actual color. Then we can plug that back in and we only separate the value from the color ramp. That way we get the differences in color, but not in the differences of hue and saturation. We combine those back together to put those out and multiply it to get the same effect. This black shadow outline is even more optional. I honestly stumbled on this by accident, so it's completely up to you if you want to have it in there. That's it for the high level stuff. If you want to see step by step, continue on. But if you just wanted to see how it's done, then this is where you can check out. We're going to start off here just making a new material on a basic plane. It's going to start you automatically with a principal BDSF and a material output. We're just going to delete this for now. We're not going to be needing rendering because we're not going to do lighting data to start off with. And if you don't know, you can hold Z and go to any of these and change to whatever output you want for the rendering. I'm going to have it on material preview for now. Obviously, there's nothing to see, but we're going to start off first with a Musgrave texture. You can do this by either searching for it or going down to texture and going to Musgrave texture. I just have the habit of searching for things, so I'll do that. You can also do this by going up here and going to add and doing it there as well. For the Musgrave texture, we're going to plug this height into the surface so we can see what we're doing. And also another way you can do this is by clicking on it and then doing Control shift click and that'll create this viewer and let you do the output here and see it as well. Now that we have this, we also want to do some mapping to get some different effects with it. So we're going to plug in a mapping node and plug that vector into that vector. Then as for this one itself, we're going to want a texture coordinate. Here you can choose to plug in any of these you really want. I'm going to start with generated. Then if you wanted to randomize the location, you could also do that as well as getting object info and plug the location into the location. This is going to change how it looks like every time you move it. But something to note is that it changes as if it's all one big image. You can see here, it's as if we're looking at a plane and just a section of it. So that's something to keep in mind. If you've ever seen the show Chowder, it's kind of that effect as they have on the outfits. So if you want that, you can do it. If you don't, then definitely make sure not to do this. For me, I'm going to cut it out. I just wanted to show that you could do that if you wanted to. The tutorial also shows plugging in a value for uniform scale. I think that could be useful here. So we're going to plug it in as well. Simply just add a value node and plug it right in there. Set this to one for default. For the Musgrave texture itself, you have different options here, 1D, 2D, 3D, 4D. I honestly don't know what 4D does, but 2D is useful for if you're just doing 2D work instead of three-dimensional. 1D is pretty much useless, but 2D seems like it could be useful here, but actually we want this to work on 3D objects as well, so I'm going to be doing 3D. This is different variances for how it's working. 
you can see here it's more white than gray. This one creates sort of a valley effect. This one's a hybrid between both. And then this is just the default. We're gonna be sticking with the default here. And the scale here is pretty much similar to this one here. It just determines kind of the zoom on it. We're gonna go with the standard five. The detail determines how much fidelity there is in the Musgrave texture, but something to note here is that the higher you go, the more costly it is on your computer. So I recommend going with something as low as possible. Considering this is just color info for the grass, I wanna get it as low as I can. So I'm gonna be getting it around one. That's really all I need. Dimension and the one I can't even pronounce. I honestly don't know what these do. I'm not an expert at this stuff, so my apologies for not knowing everything. The next part is adding a noise texture. This is completely optional, but I like to add it to add some more variance within the texture. Same kind of information for this. We've got scale, detail, roughness, distortion. We can plug this into the output. We can see here the black and white. If you do the factor, it's going to be black and white. Color is going to be colored. The muscular texture doesn't have that, but the noise does. So that's something to keep in mind when you're mixing them together. The scale, we can turn up here. All the same. Detail the same. I'm going to get this around 1.5 because I feel like the noise should have a bit more detail and make it a bit more rough and then distort it just a little bit to kind of give it a wave effect, but not too much. Then to mix these together, we're going to simply add a mix RGB node. We're going to plug this in here, plug the height in there, make sure it's the factor going into this. And then now we can see here, if we go all the way here, it's just the noise texture. If we go all the way to one, it's just the Musgrave texture. So you can just mix this to your liking. I'm going to have it about here to kind of get both. Now we're done with the generated texture. So I'm just going to group this all together. You can do that by adding a frame node. So we'll do that here. For quickly adding all this stuff to the frame, you can just select over it like this and then click on the frame and then do control P and that'll attach it in. You can do F2 to change the frame or right click and do rename. And we're just going to call this generated texture. Now that we've got the generated texture, we're going to be going into making the color for it. So we can do just mix RGB. This will go into the factor, and then we're going to choose our two colors for the grass. I think it's important here to go over color theory a bit, just in case you don't know too much about it. Yellow is actually lighter than blue. So if we have the same value here, value dictates the bright and dark. So if we have the same value here, it actually changes the darkness of the image if you were to make it black and white based on whether it's closer to blue or closer to yellow. So even though the value is the same here as this blue, the blue is actually darker than the yellow if we were to make it black and white. So that's something to think about when you're considering values. As such, when we get a darker grass, we're going to want it closer to blue. So we're going to go with about here. And of course, you want to change the value as well. So we're going to go with a deep color here. And then something else to note is that when a color is darker, it tends to have more saturation. So closer to the outskirts here. And then when it's lighter, it tends to be closer to the inside. So for the highlight here, we're going to go with something closer to yellow and then turn up the brightness as well. Now, obviously, this isn't looking like grass. So we'll get into doing the particle system. The particle tab can be found here, and you're going to click Add just right there. We're going to get a particle system. It's going to start you off with the default. We're just going to call it Grass Particles. We're going to change this to Hair. And one thing we want to do is go to Rendering tab up here before we start on this. There's going to be a Hair tab down below. We're going to do Strip, Zero, and that'll set it up for us. Go back down to Particle System. We're just going to keep this standard. We're not going to be using Regrow or Advanced Features for this. For the emission, the number dictates how many there's going to be, but something to keep in mind is this affects the computational power. So you want to try to get this as low as possible. And obviously we're going to lower this height. So we take the hair length and we're going to lower it down. Something interesting you could do is keyframe this. So there's this here and you can keyframe it based on the time and you could have it grow if that's the effect you're looking for. We're going to turn the segments down so we can do as little as possible. We're just going to have it to two. This determines how many segments are in each part of the grass blade. When choosing the number here, it's important for me to note, we're going to be doing children later on. So each one of these is going to be a parent and we're going to have about 25 with each of these. So I would recommend choosing this value after we go with that. But before we get to there, we're going to want to go to render and make sure this is set to path. If you wanted to do objects for these, you can do that. But for here, we're going to do path. So it's a 2D object. Material should be auto set to the material you have here. But just in case, make sure it's the material of your grass. Then going down to path, we're going to have this. You can turn on B spline and then turn this down to two for the steps. The children is none right now. We're going to change it to simple. For the display amount, I recommend having this set to the render amount. So you always know what the output is going to look like. For me, I'm going to set these both to 25 and see how that looks. Something to keep in mind is looking at it from above as well. You can change the number count based on how sparse you want the grass to be. If you want it to be very dense, you're going to have to move this up. But if you don't want it to be very dense, you can split it down and change the children as well. I think a thousand is good here, so we're going to stick with that. Now going onto this, you'll notice they're all pretty much the same height. And a way we can change that is by changing the length here. But first we need to change the threshold because it's just going to be doing all of them. But if we go into threshold here, it changes how many of them are children with this. So something around there is fine. The seed is just the randomization, so this really doesn't matter too much. You can choose whatever you want for the seed. I just keep it at zero. The size only matters for three-dimensional stuff, so that's not going to be useful here. Like if you're doing the objects up here, this is where size and random size would be useful. 
radius dictates their position from the parent. If you have it to zero, they're gonna be right on the parent. And then if you spread it out, it's gonna go further away. The roundness dictates their position on the y-axis. So this is useful for giving the illusion of different heights. Although something to bear in mind is that it's gonna lift off the ground. So if that's something you wanna avoid, then definitely try to keep roundness down at zero. But for me, I'm perfectly okay with them levitating a bit. So we're gonna do that to give the illusion of height. The last thing we're gonna do is clump these together. If you turn it down, they get closer at the root. And if you turn it up, they get closer at the tip. We're gonna be going for closer at the root, just a little bit. The shape dictates how much they bow out. I'm gonna turn that up just a little bit. And then the twist is twisting around the parent object. You can do this a lot or a little or not at all. It's up to you. I'm gonna do just a little bit here to give them a bit of a wave, but not too much. The strand shape dictates how wide they are. It's kind of a general shape for all of them. Then we're gonna get into more specific measurements. Diameter root is gonna be the base of it. The tip is gonna be the tip of it. And that diameter scale is gonna be how much the diameter is for all this. I'm gonna make these a bit thicker, but not too much. With that, you've got your particle system. Briefly, I'm just gonna show my two. Okay, so I have a low cost and high cost one. The high cost one seems to have been deleted, so that sucks, but basically my low cost one is 2000, my high cost one was 5000. But you can see here just how different results you can get by tweaking around with this stuff. I'm tweaking all the same values I showed you to get this round effect, and then you can get this effect as well. Okay, so now that we've got the particle system working, we're gonna go back into the shader, and now we're gonna get the lighting data. The first thing we're gonna want is a diffuse shader, and we're gonna plug this in just to see the output real quick. You can see it's not showing here. We're gonna to have to switch to rendered and you can see the lighting data is coming in from the sunlight. If you don't have a light in your scene, you can just quickly add one. You can just do a quick sunlight, but this is just getting lighting data from the diffuse shader. You can change the color here to get different color for it, but I'd recommend just keeping it at white. From here, we're gonna get a normal map. If you notice now, all of the light is getting affected on the individual grass blades and we wanna get rid of that for this effect. So what we're gonna do is add a normal and this basically will take the plane data below all the grass and use that for the lighting. So now it's getting all the lighting data from the plane itself. So you can see the individual blades don't have that shadow on it, but the blades are still having shadows. The way we can disable that is by going to the material tabs and turning shadow mode onto none. You can see that we have no lighting now and that's because we don't have any objects here to cast shadows. So if we quickly just set the 3D cursor here and add a UV sphere, we can see now it's getting that lighting going on. Something to note here is that this won't cast shadows either. So let's say for example, we change this into that texture. It's not gonna cast shadows onto the plane. So if you wanted to have a surface with the grass on it that casts shadows, what you would need to do is have two different materials. The way you would do this is have a material here. We'll just do a new one and we'll call this surface. By having the grass shader in the first slot here, the particle system is automatically gonna grab that for its material. But just in case you have it somewhere else, you can go to the particle system. We'll add one here, get our grass, go down to the material and make sure it's set to that. You could choose either one. So with that, now we've got our particle system and you notice you're gonna to have to tweak the particle system based on the object it's on, like it just doesn't work here. But we can change the surface here to just be a regular thing. For this, we can just set it to like a lighter color there. And then what we need to do is go into edit mode and select your entire mesh and then apply it here. You click assign and then now it's assigned that entire texture. If you don't know whether or not it's assigned, what you can do is just do select here. And there you go, they'll show you that everything is selected now. By default, it should be setting it to this first material. So you're pretty much always gonna have to do this. You could either do setting the first material to this so that it's automatically the entire mesh and then have the second material be your grass shader and then plug that into the particle system. It's up to you how you want that to flow. But so now the surface has a material separate from the grass itself. If we go over to rendered, we can see it's casting a shadow now and it's got its own material. With that, we're gonna be going back to the shader. So now we have this normal map of the mesh itself projected into the diffuse BDSF, getting us the lighting data. We're gonna put this in a shader to RGB. It's pretty straightforward what that does. We do this so we can put it into a color ramp. The color ramp is what's gonna give us the tune effect. Basically, what most people do is have constant here, but I liked in what one of the tutorials they did was set it to linear and just put them very close. This gives you an almost tune effect, but you get to choose how much you want that tune effect to be there. If you don't want it at all, you can just turn it back to constant. But if you want some gradient there, you can just put it really close. I'll put an object here so you can start to see that working. And I'll also dampen our sunlight so it's not so bright. So you can see here, we've got this contrast between white and dark. What we wanna do now is separate this data so we can get the value from it because all we really care about is the black and the white. We can do this by getting a separate HSV. This is gonna separate hue, saturation, and value. All we want is the value. We can see here it's basically the same effect because we don't have any color, but it'll be more obvious if we add a point light with a color on it. We can add this color right here and set it to red. You can see the red color is going on the sphere because this is just a default material, but this itself isn't getting that color because we're just plugging in the value. It's that same effect if we take this color ramp and put it out. It's just that white color there. So we're gonna go back to doing this. We're gonna get this separate. You can just do shift T to duplicate it. We're gonna take the color here and separate it before it goes into the color ramp. We want hue and saturation. So we're gonna get a combined HSV and we're gonna plug in the hue 
saturation, and then the value from here. Then we're going to plug that into the output. And this gets us a combination of the color, the saturation, but then separates the value. Okay, so that's pretty much it for all the lighting data. Now we're going to group these up into their own panels just to organize a bit. All right, so now we're going to move on to the shadow. What we're going to have here first is a mix node. This is going to be getting us our shadow color and its intensity. We're going to determine the shadow color by getting our own color here. So we can set this to a very dark green to begin with and go here and then turn it all the way down. Then we're going to plug the color we have from our Musgrave texture and put it into the color too. So this factor will determine the strength of the shadow. We're going to have this up a bit. Next thing we're going to need is another mix node. So you can either add another one here or duplicate this. Something to keep in mind is if you're duplicating this, all the values are going to be the same. So you want to make sure to reset this stuff. In some cases, it's just better to add a new one. We're going to take the info from our color ramp and plug it into our factor. Then we'll take this color, plug it into our top, take the color from our tone, and plug it into the bottom. So plugging this in, we can see the output now. This is actually going to be inverse, so if we drag it down, we're going to see the shadow. And you can completely change this to whatever color you want. We're actually almost finished here. The only thing we need to do is get the color data here, and we're going to multiply those together. Because right now, we're just getting the color ramp data for the factor here on the shadow. We're going to add a multiply, which we get by just doing a mix RGB and then toggling it to multiply. We're going to take the color from our Musgrave and shadow and plug it into the first color. Then we're going to take the output here after our combined HSV and put it into the second color. For the factor here, this is where you can have the black effect. If you don't want that, you can just plug the factor in here, plug it into our output, and then we're done. You can see this doesn't get perfectly what you want, so you can actually just plug in this color here, and then we get a softer effect. But that's a little too soft, so what we can do here is add the effect I had. And based on how you tune it, you'll have that black outline, or you'll just have it look normal. For that effect, we're going to take this color ramp, duplicate it, and bring it up here. And then we can just separate this by doing Alt-P. Then we're going to plug the color of our shader to RGB into our factor and plug this color into the factor here. So this is basically acting as a middleman between these two. Now, right now, it's obviously going to be the same effect, but if we tweak these, we get that black outline. Now the shader is pretty much done. The last thing I'm going to do is just add some frames to this to organize it a bit. So with that, we're actually done with the shader. I want to go on a bit more just to show you how you can get this output onto the material tab. It's useful for making multiple types of the material and quickly editing things. But if this is all you wanted, then we're pretty much done here. As for getting this to the output, it's pretty straightforward. We're just going to select everything except for the output. We're going to do Control G. This is going to group it all together. Alternatively, you can just highlight it all, do right click and group. Now this is in its own group. The way we get back is by pressing Tab, and we're going to be back in here. And this is just going into the output. Obviously, we can get rid of that frame there. We're going to go back in here, and we want to do is rename this. So we're going to do here and just call it Grass Shader, and I'm going to throw on Redo. Tab to go back in. Press N to pull up the side tab, and we're going to see our inputs here. And a really easy way to get these inputs on here is just dragging them over. So if we take this color, drag it here, it'll also set the default value, so it's really useful for that. If you want to change the name of it, you can click here. We're going to call this Grass Tone 1. We're going to get this one here, plug it in, Grass Tone 2. And I'm just going to go through these real quick and then talk about it afterwards. I'm sorry, I completely missed a step here. I left out the brightness and contrast, so we'll add that in real quick. You can just search bright contrast, and it'll be that node right there. And we can plug it in between these two mixes. It's in between the mix just at the end of the generated texture and the tone mix. We can plug this back into here as well by doing Control P. Really what this is going to do is it's going to change the intensity of that Musgrave texture and basically whether the black and white is dominant. You can do that by changing the brightness, and then the contrast changes that effect. This is kind of another way to tweak the noise. We're going to plug that into our out. Uh, sorry, I just completely forgot about that, but it's there now, and hopefully that wasn't too hard to get back in there. I would also recommend tweaking the range here on the brightness and contrast. I find that negative 5 to 5 here works well, but it's completely up to you just because the range can vary. For this, I do negative 10 to 10. And there's really no reason to have these clamped. It's just for me when I'm tweaking the values to have a tighter range there. Okay, that's everything for the naming. Just real quick here, I'll zoom in. And then I'll zoom out just to see all those connections. It's a bit hard to see the massive connections, but hopefully you're able to follow it. So now that we've got that set up, we can just completely tweak the values from outside here. This is good if you want to key anything on an animation like I showed in the beginning. And if you ever want to change things, you can add more things into the key or take things off if you wanted to. If you wanted to, you can even do it with the positions of these. Unfortunately, I don't know way to do the color itself, but you can do the positions of this stuff. So if you wanted to change the intensity of that tune shader, you could do that. You do that by right-clicking on the position and adding a driver. This driver you connect to an output. It's a bit complicated, so I won't be getting into it, but I just want to let you know that it's something you can do if you want to. So yeah, now outside here, we can change these values very quickly, and that's pretty much everything. Uh, I encourage you to experiment with this stuff. Try different textures, try adding things. You can layer on more textures for more complexity. You can mix more tones if you wanted to, if you wanted different colors in here. You can just add more mixes in here and throw it in. You'll be amazed how much you can change just by experimenting with stuff. And if you ever break it, you can just look back here and get a reference. 
I'll blow this up real quick just for one last look at it. Do that by doing control space bar and there's a look at it.